Michael Van Ronkel here for HotCars.com. I'm here today in Santa Monica or North Venice with an Airstream Interstate 24X. This is based on a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis. It's 24 feet long, 170 inch wheelbase, and it's sort of Airstream trying to get into the whole off-roading and overlanding craze that's huge these days. It's got knobbies, it's got an air suspension system, it's got a roof rack and solar panels, but the question is, how does it drive? I've had this thing for a couple days now, and let me tell you, it's very hard to park here in West LA, but let's get it on the highway, take it off-roading, and do some camping. I've got Dog as my co-pilot. I'm ready to go, but in the meantime, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. City streets, it can feel a little big, but in all honesty, driving this thing is very much like driving a car, except that you've got the racket of your whole house behind you. It's 24 feet long, but it's pretty narrow. And it's pretty tame. I'm impressed by the Mercedes Sprinter platform for sure. This thing has 188 horsepower, which doesn't sound like much for something that weighs 6,200 pounds before Airstream puts all this stuff in it. But it's got 325 pound-feet of torque. And those numbers should give you a clue that this has a diesel engine, a turbo diesel V6. The diesel is made into a seven-speed automatic transmission that really does an excellent job of keeping you in the rev range, which is like 1800 to 3400 RPMs, I'd say, is when you just feel like you've got plenty of power. The mirror here is actually a video camera, which is nice, because you wouldn't be able to see much with a real mirror. But there is fairly good visibility out the right side. One nice detail is, like right here, I'm gonna turn on my turn signal to merge into the right lane. And when I do that, this camera automatically becomes a side view camera for my blind spot. Less important here, unless I'm looking at a tiny, tiny sports car that I can't quite see, but they're very helpful here on the left side, even though the mirrors are pretty big and helpful on the sides. Let's get on the freeway, and hopefully there's not too much LA traffic. You wanna take that turn a little wide, but the rear end doesn't track too much tighter. It's not like you're towing a trailer. This is a van after all. The wheelbase is 170 inches, which is longer than any car and most trucks but it's not too awkward around town until you're trying to find parking. And once you're on the highway, it's got a surprising amount of power. It's probably faster than my Montero, which is, you know, not saying much, but it is saying a lot for such a vertical aerodynamically challenged design. Unfortunately, as soon as you get moving, all you hear are the creaks and rattles. The ceiling metal is sort of falling apart. There's something over here that I haven't even figured out yet right by my left ear that creaks a lot. And all of the cabinets and stuff, as you would expect from a home on wheels, make a fair amount of noise. But I have driven some other campers, notably an Earth Cruiser Terra Nova, which is a, basically a shell dropped onto an F350 chassis with removing the rear bed and all that. They use self-lubricating plastics for a lot of their construction. And that thing was dead silent. You couldn't tell it was anything more it just beeped at me, warning that there's somebody relatively close behind. This thing does have driver's aids. It's got adaptive cruise control and lane departure warning, which is less helpful than just letting me know when there's someone in my blind spot, which I guess I could get used to, but I still don't appreciate, because every time it beeps, I get a little nervous. So with all that torque from the diesel and four-wheel drive and dualies at the rear, this thing is rated at 5,000 pounds of towing, so you could haul like your Jeep Wrangler behind you if you felt so inclined to go set up somewhere and then drive the Jeep around. The thing is, this thing doesn't have like full tanks so that you could be off grid entirely for a long time like a full size Airstream trailer. It does have, on the other hand, a 24 gallon gas tank so you can go pretty far and your range is around 400 miles because the estimate for this thing on the highway is around 17 miles per gallon. Again, that's not great, but you're all in a house and you got this huge tall thing with roof racks and an awning and everything. Here we are, we've made it to the high desert. We climbed about 4,500 feet of elevation and I just came away from that drive about an hour and a half, so impressed by this Mercedes Sprinter van as a platform for the Airstream. 
coming up the steeper grades, the diesel engine, the seven speed, just no problem at all going, you know, 55 to 70. You get up to 80 and it seems like it's working a little hard, but we were climbing pretty significantly. Here's another little hill and it's just, it's just gonna cruise right up here. Now I've used about a third of a tank of gas driving from Airstream to my apartment and now out to the desert. So that's not too bad. But one thing that you do have to consider is the use of diesel emissions fluid or DEF. And it does have a separate gauge for DEF and it's down to about seven eighths, I'd say. So again, not too bad. Here we are, let's go find a dirt road to see how this thing does with four wheel drive. Let's give this hill a try in four wheel drive. Now this is a pretty bumpy road for most vehicles and you can definitely feel it. Sort of taking the dips okay. It wants to go slow though. I think it's all the weight. I can feel the, getting a little bit of wheel spin at times. And I think maybe four low would have been a good idea there. But overall, not too bad. We just sort of went up the hill. Coming down the hill, I feel like I want to take it easy. It's almost a little bit tippier than it felt coming up. Not bad though, just a little bit. Here's a nice dip. The suspension just does really well. Even though this thing is so heavy, it's not too terrible going down this. Again, just amazed by the sprinter's ability to handle the extra weight of an Airstream sort of home build here on this 24X. Let's make a U-turn and try that hill again in four low and see how it goes. Yeah, it's, the transmission is net noticeably revving up higher now. Oh, a little bit of wheel spin again. The traction control light is coming on, but it feels like it's got a lot more power. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think with four low on now, we've got so much torque that it's just happy to spin the wheels immediately. I think four high might have been a little bit better. All right, now let's try and find a place to park so I can show you some of the things that Airstream installs inside and outside of this thing to justify that $230,000 price tag. Once you've done some light off-roading in your Airstream Interstate 24X, you found a good spot out in the middle of nowhere to stop for the day, what's next? Well, the great part is you've brought the house with you, so you don't have to set up camp, really. You don't have to get out the camp table. You don't have to set up a kitchen. You don't have to go around and get your fire pit ready, chop your wood and do all that because you've got your house with you. I still would say you'll probably wanna set up a camp chair. So you just pop open the door. It opens automatically. You let the poor dog out. Come on, pull out a camp chair and set it up for the night. So with your little area set up, the dog's gonna explore, no doubt. Before the sun starts getting too hot, which is not the case here, but it's still sort of piercing, what you wanna do is you turn on the main batteries here. You've got this whole panel here that controls lights and floodlights and undercarriage lights, but the controls to for the awning are for some reason under the passenger seat here. I think maybe this door needs to be closed to open and close the awning just in case. And there you go, you've got protection from the elements to a certain extent, and Airstream had one of their guys go over this thing a little bit with me, and he told me that this thing actually has a detection sensor for high wind, and if this starts buffeting a lot, it will automatically retract. And you can set up one of the interior tables here, which, is adjustable. You can take it from the inside little nook to the bed area or set it up outside. So now let's do a little walk around of some of the other exterior details here. You can close the screen door, which will help keep the bugs out of the interior. Walking around the front. Now we haven't heard it yet, but this does have a self-leveling air suspension system. So when you're parked, occasionally you'll hear air coming out of one side or the other, or pumping up even, and getting the air compressor going again. 
to help keep it level so that when you go to sleep, your bed is nice and level. On the driver's side, you've got all your little hookups. So, oh, you need the key to get into there. But I think that's uh, your hot water and cold water for the outdoor shower, which is a nice little detail because the indoor shower is pretty cramped. And if the weather's okay, it would be nice to take a shower outside. I think you've got sewage and plumbing and gray water and black water. Here is a connection for, I believe, if you're gonna be really hooked up to a campsite that has propane. We've got city water only. You can really pump up faster there. And of course, a normal plug here to actually power the thing because even though it's got 300 watts of solar panels on the roof, that will sort of keep you going. You will eventually run out of battery power if you're just parked here for more than a couple days. These are the pillows that are supposed to form a bed. They've got these little Velcro straps here, but there is in fact nothing to Velcro them to. But once you've got it all set up again, it's pretty comfortable. You've got a fair amount of headroom. I'm six foot one and I've got maybe an inch here. So someone over six foot two would have to be sort of hunched over. But you've got these modular storage systems built into the walls, into the ceiling, into here, and it's got a fair amount of space. There's no real storage for bigger stuff. You've got these racks up here, but they're already sort of full of Airstream gear here. You've got things to cover the windows for a little bit of privacy and weather protection. The dog is kind of a little nervous because these seats are very slippery. But as long as I'm sitting here, of course, he's comfortable. And he's the perfect size for overlanding and off-roading because he doesn't take up too much space in the cabin. Come on. Sit. Look at the camera. Good boy. So really, it's a question of how much actual camping are you gonna do off the grid entirely? Or are you going to be pulling into a campsite with hookups and parking there and then exploring the area around it? The Airstream Interstate 24X sort of advertises itself as this totally off-grid van life thing. But, you know, for people who are used to RVing where they can spend a couple days, maybe a week without having hookups, maybe this isn't the right choice. Get in. Good boy, you've got a step, which helps. You've got a second step. And then you're in here. Let's talk about the design right here behind the driver's seat is a little nook where that modular table can go. Then you've got all your electronic control panels here for, for example, warming the battery, turning the Wi-Fi on and off. This is supposed to be ready for 5G Wi-Fi if your phone is so equipped. You can keep the tanks warm. You've got all your tank monitoring systems. And of course, this little modem. The cabinets are all this really nice material presumably very lightweight, and the buttons work very well. Then going over to here, you've got storage, shelves, call it a spice drawer or something. More storage down here. You've got your fridge, of course. It's five cubic feet. You've got a full-on freezer. You've got more storage above the drivers and passenger seats here. And one of the funniest details is, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cup holders up front. I love it. That's such an important detail when designing vehicles. The kitchen is definitely one of the highlights. You've got a real sink here with a faucet. That's gonna be great for cleaning. And then this looks like it's an induction surface with a lot of labels, but it's actually a full-on propane grill top, which I love. You've even got a little miniature microwave here, which is pretty sweet. It's brand new, never been used. Under the sink, you've got storage compartments and more drawers. Of course, the absolute best part is you've got a bathroom. The shower head doubles as the faucet down here. It does not apparently retract, but you get the idea. You've got a mirror and you've got a fan vent here, which can pop up. 
You've got a, a hook for a towel on the door. Up top here is your climate control system. It's got a 15,000 BTU AC on top. You can also control it via this little touch screen here for the heater. These little reading lights work, you know, somehow. There we go. Now we're on. Now, ooh. Under here, you can see there's little cubbies. There's your outdoor shower hose, very important. Up top that we can't see, way up there, maybe just barely, the climate control AC unit and the solar panels, which are 400 watt solar panels. They will be enough to help you sort of extend your stay if you're really off grid with no hookups. It does have a Cummins generator, a 2.5 kilowatt generator that does have an auto start function. So that's pretty nice. You've got an inverter and you've got all the controls in there to turn it on when you want. If you start to think that your batteries are getting low based on the gauges. So that's sort of a nice primer on the Airstream Interstate 24X. This thing costs $230,000. The Sprinter van on which it's based starts at about 60. So doing the math there, if you had $170,000 to build one of these things for yourself, do you think you could do that? And that brings up the second question. If you can finance this thing for 30 years like an actual house, and you're just paying a couple hundred bucks a month to have a rolling home, maybe that's why these are becoming so popular. Maybe that's why van life can actually be feasible for people who aren't making a ton of money. The interior layout itself is pretty good. You're challenged for space, but that's just part of the game. I like the kitchen and the fridge and the bathroom. The bed slash sofas area, I'm not so big on. And I looked at the interior layouts of the Interstate GL and GT, as opposed to the 24X, and those looked a little bit more refined, but that's kind of the point. This is supposed to be your rugged off-roader. In the end, I guess if you got the money to spend, the Airstream would be a good way to go, and there's probably nothing quite like it on the market, plus you get that Airstream cachet. I hope you learned something watching this video about the Airstream Interstate 24X. Thank you for watching, and as always, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out.